Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Clinton's Bog Ventures. Uh, my name is Clinton Dexter Inhouse. I am the head naturalist with the Friends of Sex in Bog. Uh, and today we're going to explore a place that uh, maybe you've never been to, but maybe you were aware of. Uh, we're here at the Zim Wildlife Management Area. We're at the main unit uh, just off of Highway 7 north of Saks Road. Um, this wildlife management area is pretty cool. Um, this is one of the places that we've been able to find a few different rare insects. Uh, and that's sort of going to be what our focus is today. I'm going to be looking to see if there's any sort of wetland wildflowers blooming. Uh, maybe there's a few bugs to find. We're in late summer, sort of early fall. Uh, we're going to check out what's down the trail. So let's go. So as you're walking down the trail here at the wildlife management area, one thing you might see are big mounds like this. Um, these are mounds that are built by thatch ants uh, or field ants in the genus Formica. Um, these happen to be red and black, uh, which is probably the most common uh, Formica ant you'll see, but there are Formica ants that are all black. Um, and these ants build these big mounds. They build these mounds for their colonies. Some ants might dig tunnels um, deep into the sand with just a little entrance, uh, but these ants build these big mounds. Um, these mounds are fairly useful for this ant, of course, keeps it protected from uh, things that might want to eat it, like northern flickers. Um, but it also serves as a good place to uh, spend the winter if you are uh, a reptile like a red-bellied snake. Uh, red-bellied snakes uh, like to overwinter in these mounds. Obviously, this one is pretty small, and it's mostly made out of gravel, so it's not going to be very well insulated for the winter. Um, but some of these other uh, mounds you might see uh, in conifer woods or maybe even in deciduous forests uh, might be great places for that snake to overwinter. Part of our late season plant community that's always fairly interesting to uh, check out and watch for a while are goldenrods. Um, this little patch of goldenrods is one of the few that are blooming right now, so there's a lot of attention to it. We've seen a couple of species of wasps, um, there's been a moth flying around, a couple of bumblebees. Um, but the reason I wanted to point this out and mention bumblebees uh, is that Zim Wildlife Management Area was our first location uh, in the Saxonbog where we actually found one of our rarer species of bumblebee, which is frigid bumblebee. Uh, for some reason, they really, really love this habitat. Um, since we first found them here, um, there's only a couple of other locations in the bog where you find this bee. Um, so sitting around these goldenrod patches, if you wanted a chance to see if you could find it, it's probably your best bet at this time of the year. The Zim Wildlife Management Area is one of around four wildlife management areas in the Greater Sac Zim Bog area. Uh, and the main unit, which is where we are right now, is around 610 acres. Um, as you can sort of see behind us, we've got some alder swamps, some scrub land uh, transitioning into bog, um, which it certainly makes it quite interesting bird-wise. Uh, birds like sedren, uh, lacant sparrow, um, even your swamp sparrows and sometimes Lincoln sparrows. Uh, but right now where we are, sort of this late summer, early fall season, uh, means a lot of cool insects, uh, and it also means uh, the potential for some cool wetland plants as well. Um, so that's what we'll focus on for, for our episode today. But if you're ever here visiting during the Saxon Bog, uh, it's, this is a fairly accessible location. So do make sure uh, to come and check it out if you're ever here. We've made it out to uh, one of the bog edges here. Uh, and one thing I hope you can notice, like I said, we're somewhere in the middle of September right now, uh, but notice how the color is starting to change already. Typically for us, uh, trees like tamarack don't start changing really until the end of September, beginning of October most years, but it's been so, 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 so dry. Um, if we take a look just over here at the ground, we can also see how dry all the mosses are. Um, there's certainly a few pockets where there's some moss doing okay, but generally speaking, even in these bog stretches, everything is incredibly, incredibly dry this year, which has sort of shifted some things for us. Uh, lots of trees that are changing color right now, uh, or have already lost their leaves right now. Um, so it's a pretty tough season uh, to be some of these bog specialists in some of these drier conditions. So we haven't had a lot of luck yet with sweep netting, but 
we have found something cool down here in the sphagnum moss. Let's take a look. Closer we look down into these little pockets of sphagnum moss, um, we see a bunch of these sedges, and there's one that's pretty interesting. Um, this sedge right here, this is kind of an old one, um, but this is called uh, Carex cordoriza. Um, it is a sedge that grows kind of over the ground and through these little hummocky areas. Three species of moss. We have this redder sphagnum moss right here. We also have this little green moss, which is called a polytrichium moss, one of our hair cap mosses. And then we have this sort of limey kind of yellowy sphagnum that is just a little bit too dry at this time of year. Sometimes when you really deep into the sphagnum, you get very, very lucky. This little cricket is called sphagnum ground cricket, and it's only found on top of these sphagnum mats where it kind of burrows in and hides from most folks who are out looking for them. What a cool, cool little cricket. So our sweep netting is starting to pay off a little bit. Um, we've been seeing a number of different spiders. Let's take a look at this one. Here she is. So this beauty is a shamrock orb weaver and is just beautiful. So these shamrock orb weavers are not an uncommon species, but they are quite variable. This is maybe the darkest one I've ever seen. They're usually some sort of a reddish, and this one is a very, very dark red. There's tons and tons of Joe Pie weed, and we've seen some bone set, uh, and there's all sorts of little buckwheats growing along here. Really just an abundance of life in this area. Nothing interesting in that load, but we did catch something really, really cool, and I've got it right here in my bag. So we don't usually keep stuff with us out on the trail. But this location, like I said, has some really interesting insects and some pretty uncommon and rare things. And this is one of them. Let's see if we can get her out. So this is an absolutely gorgeous grasshopper. Uh, and one of the one reasons that I wanted to come out today and try to find um, some cool grasshoppers. Um, this is a female northern sedge locust. Uh, this is a fairly uncommon species throughout its range. Um, it's widespread sort of boreal forest through Canada uh, out east into Maine and areas like that. Uh, but it is a fairly hard to find species of grasshopper because it is a sedge specialist. It doesn't live anywhere that there aren't abundant growths of sedges. Uh, and as you might guess, the Saxon bog is one of those places that happens to have a lot of sedges. Uh, so we got this beautiful female um, just here at Zim Wildlife Management Area. Uh, this is the third or fourth time that I found them here, so this seems to be a good spot for them, um, just like it seems to be a really good spot for rare insects like frigid bumblebee. Uh, so we're going to let this female go. We hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and the next time you're in the bog, do come out and check out uh, Zim Wildlife Management Area. It might be worth your while. Thanks. We'll see you in the bog.